Today's reflection from St. Peter's Wellsbourne is from our Lent book, The Living Cross. It's Monday the 8th of March, putting our sins behind his back. Isaiah chapter 38, verses 1 to 6, 9 and 15 to 17. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. A writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. But what can I say? He has spoken to me, and he himself has done this. I will walk humbly all my years because of this anguish of my soul. Lord, by such things people live, and my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. As I read Hezekiah's plea to the Lord, some lyrics of a gospel blues song keep running through my mind. I know God, he don't never change. God, he always will be God. It's true that the Lord won't change. From everlasting to everlasting, his goodness remains. And yet, and yet, how amazing is it that although the goodness and loving kindness of the Lord stays the same, yet because of his great mercy, the God of the universe can and does change his mind, as we see with Hezekiah. Though the Lord had decreed that the king of Judah would die, Hezekiah cries out with eloquence and passion, stating he has followed God wholeheartedly. The Lord relents, adding 15 years to his life. Hezekiah responds with a song of love and lament. Though life is fleeting, the Lord saves him. The Lord answers his request, and he will therefore live humbly and with thanks. He responds with this evocative line. In your love you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. What a wonderful image. We might try to escape our sins by pushing them under a carpet or sweeping them into the corner of a room, but they can tumble out and control us. We might try turning our back on our sins, shielding our eyes from their gruesomeness. But only through Jesus bearing our sins on his back, on the cross, will we be made free. For this is how the Father puts our sins behind his back. Then we will no longer be known by the false names we take on or are given, such as liar, useless, cheat, gossip or guilty one. Instead, we are washed free able to live out our identity as beloved, warrior, delighted in, chosen. Today, consider the image of your sins being put behind God's back. How does that feel? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as I contemplate your sacrifice, I am humbled. I'm sorry that my sins and wrongdoing sent you to the cross, but I am grateful that through your death they no longer bind or control me. I am free, and I am forgiven. I can stand tall, knowing that I am no longer dirty, but cleansed and washed. 
My sins are behind the Father's back. Help me to forgive as I have been forgiven, to extend mercy and grace when I might be tempted to exact revenge. I don't want to become bitter or ensnared by my sins, but I want to live in the light of your love, that I may share this love with others. May it be so this day. Amen.